Here's Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there. My name's Diamond, and I'm known along the big street as a guy who manages to keep his nose pretty clean and still make a few bucks while I'm doing it. Oh, sure, it gets a little grimy, but you've got to expect that. I'm a shamus. Private eye. Gumshoe. To the guy who hasn't ever been worried because he tripped over a corpse in his breakfast nook, I'm known as a private detective. And to some guys, I'm known by a lot of other names. Not the kind you'd find in a book on manners and social usages. But there are times when you might turn up on your desk calendar under the heading of what I must do today. Who hires me? How do I make a living? Well, maybe this will give you an idea. Fred, why don't you eat your toast? It's getting cold. Why don't you stop worrying about the temperature of my breakfast? I'm trying to read the paper. Did anyone ever tell you how charming it is to have breakfast with you every morning? Yeah. My ulcers. I'd like to go shopping today. Will you leave me some money? Fred, did you hear me? Mary, I'm reading. Well, stop reading and listen to me for a minute. I need some new summer clothes, and I want to go shopping today. Here. Here's ten bucks. Buy yourself a bathing suit. Oh, that's very funny. Hmm? I need more than ten dollars. I want five hundred. What kind of a bathing suit are you going to buy, Mink? I'm not going to buy a bathing suit. I need some new clothes. Will you put down that paper and listen to me? Well, I see you made Jimmy Cello's column again, my darling. What? What prominent socialite is fighting with her wealthy husband? and crying on the shoulder of a big-time playboy after the arguments. Is that... that's supposed to be me? Can you remember five minutes in the past five years when we haven't been fighting? Are you accusing me of running around with some playboy? Running around is right. I expect one of you to be the first to do a four-minute mile. How dare you? How dare me, why, you lushed-up little tramp. Tramp? Yeah, tramp. Everybody in town knows you're seeing Lauren Oliver. All right, so I've been seeing him. We're... we're just friends. Well, that kind of friendship is grounds for divorce in this state. Why, you oh, dirty... Shut up. I'm sick of this whole rotten mess. And I'm going to do something about it. You're going to do something about it? Why, you conceited, pompous... You're going to do something, are you? Well, you better hurry up because I've got some ideas of my own. Uh, yeah? Lorne. Yeah, yeah, Mary? I've got to talk to you. What time is 10 it? Ten o'clock. Well, it's still the middle of the night. Call me back this later. This can't Wait. Fred found an item about us in Jimmy Cello's column this morning. He stormed out of here like he was going to kill somebody. Well, you're just a gal who can recognize the symptoms. Well, that's a nasty line. What do you want at 10 in the morning, Longfellow? Look, honey, I'll take care of Cello, and if that husband of yours gets out of line, I'll take care of him, too. You see what I mean? If things like that didn't happen, I'd be out of business. I'll lay you eight to five that before three o'clock this afternoon, one of those charming people will be walking into my office begging for help. Yeah? Rick? Oh, hello, Helen, baby. Hi. You gonna take me out tonight? Sure, sure. I'll be over later. We'll have a quiet evening. No, no. I want to go dancing tonight. If you don't take me, I'll throw a tantrum. But, baby, I don't have the cash. I'm tapped this week. Well, if you won't let me take, you'll borrow it from friends told me yourself he was good in a pinch. Yeah, but he's already black and blue from those three lunches at Lindy's. Besides, he's not only your butler, but he's a darn good businessman. He wants security. Well, I'll give it to him. He's already got my badge, my book on the ten best ways to sneak through transoms, complete with illustrations, and my gun. Haven't you got something else? Yeah, but I'm saving the right eye in case of an emergency. Keyholes, you know. Look, honey, let's go take in a quiet movie. Well, and... I want to get dressed up and go to a nightclub. Summer. The flowers are blooming and the fox has left his lair. His what? Oh, I've been hibernating all winter and I want to get out into some nice smoke-filled dance floor. Why, Helen. Why, Helen, nothing. Please, Rick. Now, hold it. Someone's knocking at my chamber door. Come in. Mr. Diamond? Yeah, pull up a chair. I'll be right with you. Who is it? 
is it? I'm afraid to look. I haven't paid the light bill. This is a detective agency, isn't it? You, sir, have just won yourself a new economy home size murder sampler, complete with a matching set of bodies. Me? No. I haven't got time to listen to your bright remarks, Diamond. I want to hire you. What did he say? He doesn't like my bright remarks. You won't even admit they're bright. What else? Oh, something about wanting to... Uh... Something about what? Uh, what was that last statement, sir? It sounded rather cozy. I said I wanted to hire you. What? I'll call you later, baby. Bye. Uh, wait, wait a minute. I, I... Now, uh, Mr. Uh... Sears. Mr. Sears, what can I do for you? I want you to follow my wife. Will I like the view? She's running around with another man. Well, if they're just running around, don't worry about it. It's when they get tired and slow down that things start to pop. There was a veiled article in Jimmy Cello's column this morning about my wife and this man. Yeah, I know Cello. So do I, but I'm not interested in Cello at the moment. Well, what do you want? Enough on your wife so you can get a divorce? Yes. Oh, well, that, that comes kind of high. I don't like cases like this, and I usually turn them down. If you want me to swallow my pride, it'll take a $200 retainer and a 100 a day in expenses. I'll write you a check. Oh, oh just like that, huh? I am quite wealthy. Hmm. That's why I want the divorce, Mr. Diamond. There you are. Yes, sir. There I am. Now, what's the man's name that your wife is uh, seeing? His name is Lorne Oliver. Well, this is turning into a family gathering. You know him? Sure. Runs the Monarch Club. That's right. What's your wife's name, and where can I get a look at her? Mary Sears. You can see her tonight at the stork. We'll be there for dinner, 9 o'clock. I'll be there. Oh, uh, incidentally, that uh, comes under the heading of expenses, in case you have a short memory. I have a good memory, Mr. Diamond. You can send me the bill. Oh. Address and phone number? 45 East 65th Street. 45 East 65. Evergreen 41793. E 41793. Now I've got to be going. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Sears. Yeah? What do you hang up on me for? Uh, honey, this is because you always give me an argument. You never want to go anywhere. I'm getting tired of shows and hot dogs. I want to go dancing. What? And I don't mean Roseland. I want to go to the stork. I'm a growing boy, and I like to see the bright lights and throw my money around. But, Rick, you... you I'll certainly... pick you up at 8.30, and this time, don't wear slacks. <laughs> You're an idiot. Bye, idiot. Yes, that's the way it goes, just as I told you. The word private in front of detective means you're married to all the troubles in the world, and that includes everything. So if a guy turns up who's unhappy with his wife, you listen to him howl, and if he's got enough money, you take the job. It's for better or for worse. And until Mr. Sears came in, it was decidedly one-sided. I'd teach cooking to a bunch of headhunters for a fee like the one he'd given me. When I looked at his $200 check, I started getting that big man complex again. So I closed the office and went back to my flat. We'd probably be up late, and Helen always had some extracurricular activities after we'd get back to her place. You know, roasting marshmallows, fast game of canasta, or an exciting round of Emmys on the living room rug. Anyway, I always got home pretty late in the a.m., so I spent the rest of the afternoon taking a nap. At 6 o'clock, I got up and dressed, and at 8.30, I picked up Helen. Wow. And at 9 o'clock, we were sitting at the Stark Club bar, right on schedule. Rick, when are you going to ask for a table? Well, honey, the drinks come faster here. But I want to dance. Oh, no, no, no. I mustn't overdo it, lover. No. How do you know? Maybe some mountain climber will ask you on a 20-mile hike tomorrow. Think of your feet. I am. I want to move them around that dance floor. Oh, Rick, I know you. You do something, you do it all the way. Yeah, let's nick. Oh, now you stop that. You're on a job, and you don't want to go in there because you've got to watch somebody. Well, Helen Asher, how are you, darling? Well, hello, Lauren. How have you been? Oh, couldn't be better. Why don't you ever stop over to my club? I'd like to show you around. She just brought a seeing eye dog. Oh, hello, Diamond. You two know each other, don't you? Yes. How did we make such a grisly mistake, Oliver? I don't know. I tried taking penicillin for it, but it didn't do much good. Well, it probably helped out in the other things. Why don't you try hanging yourself? Really? You always did think you were a pretty funny man, didn't you, Diamond? <laughs> It's easy being a comic. You just find an idiot for an audience. How do you like the performance? Stinks. Pardon me, Helen, but I see some people I know. You'll excuse me, won't you, Diamond? Oh, sure, yes. But the next time you drop around, bring some airwick, huh? Rick, even if you don't like him, you shouldn't say those things. It's liable to start a fight. Oh, uh, he wouldn't take a swing at a midget if he was riding an elephant. I wonder who his friends are. They don't seem to be too glad to see him. The name's Sears. Is that who you're watching? Yeah, the wife. I don't know whether I approve or not. 
she's very attractive. Isn't she, though? Rick! This is business, baby, business. I'm only drooling because I haven't had anything to eat since this morning. Well, then let's get a table. You've seen her. You've observed what she's doing. Now let's get something to eat. Now, wait a minute. Here comes somebody else I know. Where? Standing at the check room. The little man? Yeah, here he comes. Who is he? Name's Cello, oh. Jimmy Cello. Writes a gossip column. I read it all the time. Yeah? Uh, hello, Jimmy. Well, 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 well. A Broadway shamus. Who's the uh, lovely redhead, Diamond? Helen, meet James Cello, but be careful what you say. Jimmy, Helen Asher. <laughs> hello, Mr. Cello. How do you do? Is this an item, Rick? If I don't get us a table soon, she's going to make me give back her sorority picture. Oh, uh, <laughs> speaking of tables, I see some people I know. Uh, nice meeting you, Miss Asher. Thank you. Goodbye, Diamond. Bye, Jimmy. Rick, he's going over to see his table. Hello, Walter. Hi, doll. Hi. Well, well, good evening. What do you want, Cello? Oh, I just dropped by to see how the happy little family was getting along. Well, just drop away. Nobody asked you to stop by. Yeah, why don't you do that and take Oliver here with you? Nobody asked him to stop by Fred, either. keep your voice down. This is my table, and I don't like a lot of crumbs lying all that over it. Who's a crumb? Come on, Lorne. I guess Mr. Sears has forgotten a few things. I haven't forgotten a thing, Cello. When you print one thing in that lying sheet of yours, and I'll have you sued for life. Listen, Sears, if I did print anything, they'd put you away so far, they'd have to pipe air into you. Oh, do go on, Mr. Cello. This is getting interesting. You'd better get out of here, Cello. No, no, no. Go on, Cello. What have you got an old money bag? He's a lying, dirty gossip monger. He doesn't have uh, a thing. Wait a minute. I don't like that. Why don't you ask your husband about North Africa sometime, Mrs. Sears? Well, just a minute. Fred, stop it. Fred. All right, now pick yourself up and get out of here, Cello. Yeah, maybe you're right. I've got a column to get out. It'll be all about you, Sears, in big type. Go on, get out. How about me? You gonna throw me out, too? You can bet your life I am. I'm getting out of here. You stay right where you are. Don't talk that way to Mary. I'll talk any way I like to my wife. Lauren, maybe you'd better leave. Here come the waiters. Now it's I'm gonna push his fat slob's face in. Yeah? Yeah. Come oh, oh, on, oh, 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 All right, all right. Come on, break it up. Break it up. Come on. Hey, waiter, give me a hand. Come on, you... Take your hands off me, Diamond. Now, calm down, Mr. Sears. I'll kill that slob. Oliver, get... you shut up or I'll... Pull your pants up over your head and shove you in a glass like a breadstick. I don't like people meddling in my affairs, Diamond. You're fired. I'm what? You heard me. Now take your filthy hands off me. Ah, well, they were lily white before I palmed that check of yours this morning. You can have it back. Here, eat it. What? I miss... I'll have you in jail for this, Diamond. Why? It isn't every day you get to eat a $200 check. Oh, Rick, let's get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, baby, but that's what happens when you go to work for a hyena like Sears. You think he's a nice guy because he laughs so much. But you find out later it's only because he chewed your leg off. We left Sears still spitting out pieces of the check I'd shoved down his throat and headed for Helen's apartment. I was sore. When I get hot under the collar, I don't make for good company. So I dropped her off with a kiss and went back to my flat and climbed in the sack. I smoked a dozen cigarettes before I got to sleep. And when I finally did, it must have been with a big smile on my face. All night, I kept dreaming that Lauren Oliver and Fred Sears were beating themselves to death with hot paper sacks. Sunshine Market. Locks popovers are specialty. Now you stop clowning and get over here right away. Walt? Lieutenant Levinson. Oh, wow. Oh. Where are you? I'm in your office. Yeah? Well, if any clients come in, give them a good sales talk. Tell them how many people you've killed or something. There's a guy in your office now. Prospect? Depends on what you're talking about. I think his name is Fred Sears. Uh, tell him to go home. He canned me last night. I don't think he'll listen. All right, all right. So he's sore. He's got a right to be. acting like an idiot, Walt. You know I didn't have anything to do with it. I know you didn't, but we find a stiff in your office and we get a report that he fired you last night, but you had a fight with him. I gotta tell the commissioner something, Rick. Tell him Sergeant Otis is teething. Now you stop that. No, what do you know about the killing? The coroner just left. He said that Sears had been dead about eight hours. The cleaning woman found him at nine this morning and called us. Mm, that puts the time of the murder around 1 a.m. We found this clenched in the dead man's hand. What is it? An article torn out of the morning papers. Here, read it. Ah, oh, Jimmy Cello's column. Read it. All right, I will. Don't yell at me. Ah, Fred Sears, wealthy import-export man, is having troubles. 
He's finding it hard to explain about his past doings in North Africa, and at the same time, he's finding it just as hard to explain his wife's interest in the local playboy, nightclub owner, Lauren Oliver. Yeah. He got so mad at the Stork Club... Oh, I was there. I was there. He got so mad at the Stork Club last night that he took a poke at your columnist and then tried to beat up Lauren Oliver. Will this lead to a rematch between Oliver and Sears? We're having a whole bunch of them picked up. Walt, Walt, before you do that, give me a couple of hours, will you? Try to dig up your killer? I can't. You know what we've got to do. It's routine. Well, the commissioner's already having fits every time he hears my name. Now, look, Rick. Walt, I got a business to protect. And if he finds out the stiff was killed in my office, he'll probably haul in my license. Yeah. One hour, Rick. That's oh. all I can give you. I got a job, too. Oh, thanks, Walt. I suppose you've got an alibi for one o'clock? Call Helen. We were toasting marshmallows. Well, I had three good suspects. Lauren Oliver, Cello, the columnist, and Mrs. Sears. One of the three was built just right for the electric chair. An hour isn't much time to dig up a killer, so I grabbed a cab and headed for Lauren Oliver's office in the back of his club. Yeah, come in. How are you, Oliver? Oh, what do you want, Diamond? Not particular about who comes into my club. Oh, I'm surprised you can operate with that kind of policy. People probably see you in here every night. I think I'll have you thrown out. Where were you at one o'clock this morning? None of your business. Herman. Yeah, boss? Come in here and show a guy out of my office. Oh, we get rough, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll let you tell the cops who knocked off Fred Sears. Hey, this is the guy, boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say someone knocked off Fred Sears? That's right, but don't start crying about it. It makes me feel so helpless. I'll tell my story to the cops. Uh, they'll get a lot tougher than I will. You won't get tough at all, Mac. Oh, stop flexing, Herman. You'll snap your girdle. Well, I guess it doesn't make much difference as long as Sears is dead. I was with his wife from about 12 o'clock to... to well, it was a long time after one. Well, where were you all that time? At my place. And I'll take a walk, Shamus. You got my alibi. One more question. Did you go out at all? Yeah, I went out and got the late papers. So what? I like to read. Okay, okay. You don't mind if I stop by and see Mrs. Sears, do you? No, go ahead. I'll see you later. Oh, Herman. Yeah? You can let the air out now. Your muscles are lovely. Well, Oliver had a good story if it checked. So that left me with two more stops. Cello's newspaper office was the closest, so I grabbed another cab, and ten minutes later, I was sitting at his desk. Oh, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you, Diamond? Where were you at one this morning? I was covering a party at Richard Gray's. I was with friends from about 11 o'clock till after three. You can check. Go on, check. Look, Poison Pin, Sears had your column from the late edition clenched in his hand. He, he did, huh? Well, you don't think if I was going to kill a man, I'd leave anything like that around? I don't know. Well, now, obviously, someone is trying to make it look like I did it. Have you talked with Oliver and Sears' wife? Oliver's got an alibi, and I'm headed for Mrs. Sears' place right now. You know the address? Yes, yeah. 45 East 65th. But Mrs. Sears couldn't kill her husband. I know her too well. No? Well, yeah. thanks, Cello. I'll check your alibi. If it stands up, then I'll have to really go to work on Mrs. Sears. <laughs> even better up close. What's on your mind? You mean right this minute? Well, aren't you nice? Don't crowd me, though. I can keep up a pretty good average in this league. I'd say about a thousand. Mm -hmm. May I come in? I think so. If you keep talking, I like to hear nice things. Well, you deserve them. But I can think of some nice things to say about a panther. We'll talk about my family some other time. Can I buy you a drink? It's a little early, unless you got some milk. Milk? Where's your husband? Oh, you know about him, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. He's looked as though it might work into quite a friendship. Where is he? I haven't seen him since last night. Why? Is he a friend of yours? He's been using my office. Oh? Yeah. yeah he died there last night. What? Everybody is so surprised. But, uh, how? Who did it? That's what I'm trying to find out, lover. Where were you at 1 a.m.? That's none of your business. Okay, let the law drag it out of you. Goodbye, dear. Uh, wait a minute. All right, I'll tell you. I was with a man named Oliver, Lauren Oliver. Oh, for how long? From about 12 o'clock to, well, much later. That's what Oliver says. Did you go out at all? Just to get the papers. That checks with Oliver's story, too. Did you go out alone? Why, uh... uh no, I, I went with Lauren. He says he went out alone. Oh, well, yes, yes, he did. I thought you said you went out with him. Well, that was later. Lauren was the one that went out to get the papers. Okay, what time was it? 
about two. When you both went out or when Lauren went out to get the papers by himself? Uh, when Lauren went out. Oh, yes. Now, now I see. Well, I, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, come back again. Oh, I'll do that after you get over crying for your late husband. I'll keep my emotions down to a minimum. I'll bet you will. I left her standing in the middle of the room, looking after me like a vegetarian with an eye on a green salad. I closed the door and started down the hall for the elevators. For some reason, I never seem to get where I'm going. Hello. Hmm? <coughs> now, while you're still tuned in, Diamond, I'll give you some advice. Stay away from Mrs. Sears. Now, I want you to be sure and get the point. <coughs> Come on, snap out of it. Uh, I'll go away. Come on, you don't look so good. Uh, it matches the way I feel. Oh, here's a new line. Where am I, Walt? In Mrs. Sears' apartment. Hello, handsome. She heard the scuffle in the hall, came out, found you, and called me. Swell. Who did it? I didn't see him, but his voice sounded like a thug that Lauren Oliver keeps around, a patty cake with. Oh, that was probably Herman. Lauren is so jealous. Well, your hour is up, and now I'm going to haul them all in, including this Herman. Oh, do you know Herman, Walt? Sure, Herman Sharp. Got a record a mile long. Uh, Walt, if a guy wanted to hire a killer, where would he go? You know all the stoolies as well as I do. Yeah. Mrs. Sears, what was the fight about last night at the stork? Oh, a columnist named, named Cello threatened my husband that he was going to print something in his paper. He said something about North Africa, and Fred hit him. North Africa? This is really getting mixed up. Was your husband ever in North Africa? Yes, during the war. He was a captain in the army. Walt, can you get me this Herman Sharp's address? He's the boy I want. Sure, but I'm coming along. Have your boys pick up Cello, Oliver, and take them both down to the station along with Mrs. Sears here. Well, well, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? I've known Jimmy Cello a long time. About five years ago, he used to run around with a little dancer named Mary Carroll. Sure he did. I'm Mary Carroll, but I broke up with him when I met Fred. Yeah, well, you'll see him at the station. You can pick up where you left off. Come on, Walt. We went down fast and climbed into the prowl car. Walt put in a call and got Herman's address over the two-way radio. Twenty minutes later, we were standing in front of Herman's door. It was an old apartment house on the lower east side. I started for the door, but Walt had other ideas. Rick, we can't go in there. Why not? Because I haven't got a search warrant. Well, you got to go in if you want to crack this case. Not without a search warrant. Search warrant for what? To go in. What do you want to go in for? I don't want to go in. You do. Do what? Go in. Well, go ahead. I haven't got a warrant. What are you looking for? Herman Sharp. He's probably in there. He is? Sure. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, what did I do that for? For that. What? Herman Sharp. Oh. Ah, is he dead? Yeah, been shot. What are you looking at? Newspaper on the floor. This morning's. Oh, Cello's column's missing, been torn out. Then Herman's your killer. Swell, who killed Herman? Don't you know? I'm not going to start that again. Walt, go on back to the station. I'm going to check something and make a phone call. I'll be down in half an hour and point out your killer. Now, calm down, calm down, this everybody. This is ridiculous. I want my lawyer. You'll get one later. Relax, Oliver. They can't hold it much longer. How do you feel, Mary? I don't like this any more than you do. Well, good afternoon. And happy Father's Day. Oh. Rick, where the devil have you been? Made a phone call to Washington, Walt. Mrs. Sears, did you know that your husband had a dishonorable discharge from the Army? Why, no. You knew it, didn't you, Cello? That's right, but I kept it quiet. He got it for running a black market. What's this got to do with the death of Sears? Oliver, you told me you went out to get the papers last night. That's right. What time was it? Uh, a little after two. You know what time the late edition comes in. How about you, Mrs. Sears? Uh, what Lorne says is correct. How about it, Lorne? Were you the one to go out and get the papers? Uh, yes. Uh, then, Mrs. Sears, why did you tell me this afternoon that you also went out to get the papers? Well, I... Mary, don't say anything. You don't have to. The stories don't check, so you couldn't have been together last night. Look, Diamond, what is this... Oh, got... now you look, Oliver. You're both liars. But that doesn't make either one of you the killer. Oh, but Rick, Cello's alibi checks right down the line. Sure it does, because he was at that party. But the killer wasn't. Oh, we know that. He couldn't have been. Yeah, but the man who hired the killer to knock off Sears was. What are you talking about, Diamond? Oliver, where was your hired Goniff last night? You mean Herman? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. He was with me until 6 o'clock, then he left. Walt, when you find Herman's gun, ballistics will probably say that it was the one that did the job on Sears. Herman? Yeah. Cello, 
You hired Herman to kill Sears, and then you killed Herman. Well, you're out of your mind. I didn't even know this Herman. We found the newspaper next to Herman's body. It had your column torn out of it. That doesn't pin anything on me. It just shows you that Herman probably stuck that article in Sears' hand after tearing it out of a newspaper. That's, you, that's what you wanted to make it look like. You knew Herman. You knew about the clipping, so you killed him and tore the column out of this morning's newspaper. Of course I knew about the clipping. You told me about it this morning in my office. That's right. But you were the only one I told about it. You couldn't convict Jack the Ripper on that kind of evidence. I'm afraid he's right, Rick. Jello, what time does the late edition come out? About two o'clock. Walt, what time is Sears killed? Around one. Say. Yeah, yeah. The killer couldn't have gotten hold of that column at one o'clock. The papers weren't even out on the street. Well, then how did he do it? Only one man could have gotten that column before 1 a.m., the man who wrote it. Jimmy. He oh. tore it out of the galley sheets. The proofs that are made up before the paper goes to press. Cello hired Herman, gave him the clippings, and then went to the party. Oh, you're doing great, Diamond. Keep it up. You're still in love with Mary Sears. You were jealous of Oliver, so you hired Oliver's boy, Herman, figuring the cops would pin Sears' murder on Oliver. How am I doing? You're a good liar and a rotten detective. You knew I'd go to see Mary Sears, so you sent Herman to beat me up and make it look like Oliver was behind it. What? You tried to frame Oliver all along the line. Why, you cheap little scandal snooper. I'll fix it so you don't frame anybody. Wait a minute. All right, break it up. Come on. Come on, break it down. Break it up. Hey, Walt. (laughs) What is it, Rick? Bye. Good evening, Mr. Diamond. Uh, evening, Francis. Miss Asherin? Yes, sir. She's in the library. She's a little tired from last night. I think she's taking a nap. Well, I'll walk on my tippy toes. How about a glass of warm milk, Francis? I'm a little tired, too. Uh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. Well, look at the little baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, has not dream rain? Poor little tired baby. The evening breeze caressed the trees tenderly. Oh, Rick. The trembling trees embraced the breeze tenderly. Hello, baby. Don't stop. All right. Close your really eyes. Then you and I came wandering by. Oh. Wonderful. And lost in a sigh were we. Ricky. The shore was kissed by sea and mist tenderly. Ricky. I can't forget how two hearts met breathlessly. Ricky, come here. Your arms opened wide and closed me inside. Ricky, come here. Uh, what is it, dear? Just this. Mm. Mm. Here's your milk, mister. Oh, my goodness. Now, this time I refuse to blush. <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, High Aberback, Joan Banks, Parley Bear, and Sidney Miller. Music was under the direction of David Baskerville. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by William P. Rousseau. Now this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.